Welcome to the fourth session in this beginning class. Um, we're going to review what you got on the last time, and uh, we will always review what we did the session before, so um, just that's how this works. And we'll add a new sequence to your practice uh, agenda, and then on the next time, we'll start putting it together and you'll start actually flowing in Tai Chi. So um, now's a good time to remind you to practice because once you start putting things together, you're going to have to memorize in a way that just doing a sequence over and over doesn't require that same level of memorization. And you're going to need to be familiar with where you're going so that you can put the moves together. But um, Let's start with the animals. So, first one, the bear. Get yourself in a good position. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel the tripod in each foot that puts you over the bubbling well. And as you turn side to side, make sure that you're keeping that good connection through each foot. You don't want to let your feet roll at all. If your feet are rolling, do less. One of the things we're always having to tell people is to do less. Make the movements not quite as big. Make the shapes a little smaller so that you can stay comfortable. So this one, you're just turning. Remember that you've got the top of your head as if it's held up from above. That's the rear crown of your head. One way to know if you're in the rear crown versus the um, center crown is, are your ears pointing straight up? When you're in the center crown, they'll point back a little bit. So the chin drops and you're hanging from above in the rear crown. Keep breathing, relaxing. You want to keep the nose with the belly button. So as you turn, that brings your head with it. You don't turn without your head coming, and you don't just turn your head uh, at random, then you won't really know where it is you, that you are. So keeping this alignment is uh, one of the things that we look for in Taiji. So your head turns because you're Dan Tian turns. Shoulders are relaxed. Let them hang. You don't have to do anything in your arms. Just let the movement be gentle and easy. Turning from side to side. Make sure that you unlock your knees. We don't ever want to lock our knees for a couple reasons. One is Taiji is about relaxing. And when you lock your knees, you aren't relaxed. Any joint that has no space in it, by Taiji definition, is not relaxed. You need to have a little bit of space in every joint. So it's not that I'm in a deep bend, but you just don't want to be locked. And it is a martial art, so we want to train ourselves to not have a locked joint because a locked joint can become an injured joint. It also helps you breathe. When your knees are locked, you can have uh, more trouble actually breathing. Anybody who's ever been in the military knows that when you lock your knees, you're more likely to pass out. So keep your knees slightly bent, just slightly. Same is true for your other joints. So the elbows aren't held hanging long. Let them have just a little bit of give. So, turning, breathing, relaxing. 
we'll do this for another moment and then we'll move on. Okay, next up is the tiger. So let's review the footwork first. Feet in a V. And you're going to take an easy step forward, bring the other foot with you, and change. Reset, and go the other way. Easy step, change. So you're stepping, putting the weight right into that foot, and letting the other foot follow. And as you do that, you want to make sure that the foot that comes in is just right there underneath you, easy to change the weight from one foot to the other. And now let's add in the arms so that we do the whole piece. Hands and fists, open your claws. Rounded and then expanding. Just notice everything coming together. We look for a feeling of harmony and unity in the body. So as your feet step out, your arms come up. As you change weight, your claws open. See if you can keep coordinating hands and feet together. That's one of the things you can look for in your own practice, is just trying to make the movements come together, hands and feet. Even though they might move at a different rate, you want everything to arrive together. Remembering to breathe. You might think of breathing in as you come forward and out as you open your claws. Don't control it. Don't direct it. Just notice there's a way that our breath helps our movements and our movements work the breath. So as you come forward, this has an expansive quality and that expands the breath as well. And when you open your claws, you can Think of being a tiger who's going to let out a roar, and that roar is an exhale. So that might help make all this feel more unified. Don't stress over it. Don't control it. Absolutely don't hold your breath to try to fit a pattern I just said. I'm going relatively quickly through this. If you need to go slower, go slower. I just want to go fast to make you not able to think too much about it and to just get your body going. This isn't something that we spend a lot of thinking power on. You have to have the feeling of it. That's what we look for. So just the feeling of everything expanding and then letting it out. Coming forward and letting out the claws. We'll do one more round. And now we'll move on to the monkey. Last time Lee was talking about this way that we shift the weight under the bridge. So we're going to do some of that as we work the monkey. One hand, opposite foot, get them ready before you move. Sit down to get that foot on the ground and then come up that leg to reach for the fruit. Let the foot come in at the end. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Sit down. As you sit down, you let the foot reach the ground. Come up that leg. Let that coming up lead you to the um, grasping the fruit. Sitting down, coming up, and grab the fruit. Mm -hmm. 
works the same way in reverse, only it's a little harder. So when you step back, you don't shift the weight right away. And as you sit down through the front leg, you're reaching with the heel of the back foot to get it to go down on the ground. Grab the fruit, step back, sit down, reach with the heel of the back foot. That will bring you into the back foot. This keeps us always connected to the ground, takes away any desire to uh, launch from the back foot when you're going forward. And um, really just staying connected to the ground is a big part of what we care about in Tai Chi, that relationship through the ground. So this move gives you a chance to do that. So feel the difference. And we talked about coordinating all the motion. So as I grab the fruit, my foot comes in. So see if you can get that to work. Coming up the front foot, grabbing the fruit, and the back foot comes in at the same time. And just let your eyes be where you're reaching so that you've got some focus in what you're doing. You kind of decide where your peach is and then you grab it. And you don't want to reach too high. It's an invisible peach. You can put it wherever you want. So make sure that you stay comfortable. You don't want to get uh, tension in the shoulders reaching for something. Let it stay as soft and comfortable as you can. And we'll do one more round. Okay, next up is the deer. You know this stance now because we've been working with it for the last few sessions. So start with your feet in a V. That's to give you the correct angle for your back foot. Sit down, step out, make sure you have length and width. Foot goes down, heel first, without committing weight to it. Foot points straight ahead. Sit down into that leg. Bend your knees, bend your hip joints, let your ankles bend. It's like you're sitting down in a chair. Come back and do it on the other side. Stepping out, both dimensions, sitting down. Weights in the, more weights in the front leg because of the shape of it, not because I'm hanging out over my front leg. So feel your back foot on the ground. Feel yourself sitting down like you're sitting in a chair. So let's do the feet one more time. Stepping into a good place for you. Sitting down. Sit into the back leg. And then come forward again. Get that feeling of changing the weight from one leg to the other. And noticing how when you come into your front leg, it really feels like you're sitting down in a chair. And then come back and we'll change feet. On the other side, sitting down in the center of the stance, both feet connected to the ground. Shift back and forth a little bit. Into the back leg and then in both feet, but using the front leg as the main of uh, support. Back and forward, over and over, 
to get that feeling of shifting. And then come back and we'll add in the arms. The arms are gonna open out in a shape like this where the short hand comes toward the elbow of the long hand. And the long hand's gonna go with your front foot. So gather, step, shift, and display your antlers. Make sure you're not reaching in a way that's going to take you out of the ground. Make it hard to keep your back foot connected or too high that kind of pulls you up out of the ground. So there's no place your arms have to reach. They're just connected to you and you wanna keep yourself comfortable and relaxed. So in all these cases, we have the same goal to stay comfortable, stay relaxed, and keep the body from straining. It should not be at the very edge of what you can possibly do, just, just inside of that where you're challenging yourself, but you're not straining. And don't forget your little deer smile. The deer smile might help you remember not to strain because once you smile, it just kind of softens everything. Now, breathing and relaxing. Noticing the feeling from the leg through the body out to the fingers and beyond. Nice and easy. And one more round of the deer. And on to the crane. So the crane is going to bring the fingers together to touch the thumb. As you step out, we're going to do that same under the bridge. Come up the front leg to open your wings. Keep the rear ball of the foot connected. Reach with the heel of the rear foot as you go down to step back. Coming up the front leg going down the front leg until the heel of the back foot is on the ground again. Everything expands. Everything focuses. The breath, the body, your awareness, all will want to be in harmony. All moving together. Staying soft across the chest. Again, there's no place you need your arms to go. So let them be in a comfortable place. If you think about being a bird, well, you have gotta fly all the way to Central or South America and back up North over and over. You gotta keep them soft. If you strain, you're not gonna make the trip. So keep everything soft and look for the, how far you can take them without tension, but don't go to a place that creates tension. Everything nice and open, moving together. When you arrive at the top of your leg, your arms have opened and Likewise, when you come back. And one more round of the crane. And the other side. So that's the animals. Next up is 
our ward off, linked ward offs. So let's do that for a bit. Again, we're going to, this is like the deer, we're going to keep stepping in and out of 70-30s and start on, I'm starting on the right side. Right hand is high, weight is in the right leg, ball of air, step out. As you shift, your hands are changing. Come back to the V, change. So one thing to look for when you do this is getting a good feel for where you step for a 70-30. It's really up to each person to figure out where they need to be. So do pay attention to the feeling. You want one foot a little ahead of the other. You want some width so that you can essentially make a chair to sit down on. You want to make sure the back foot is angled and that the front foot is pointing directly ahead. You want to make sure that when you arrive, your arms have arrived. That's one of the hallmarks of Tai Chi is that everything starts moving and stops moving in unison. Even if it's not in lockstep, you want to keep the body moving until it arrives and then everything should arrive together. So this one is great for getting that feeling of where you want to step for your 70-30. It also gives you a chance to do what we call turning the waist. So the waist doesn't just mean the place where you would put your, you know, close your belt. Waist also involves this part back here. And as you go from one to the other, you're in the corner, you turn the waist to complete the move. Go to the other corner, turn your waist to complete the move. So what's important about Tai Chi, you have to learn the choreography but that doesn't mean that you can't be already paying attention to how it feels inside. If you feel like you're straining, maybe you're taking a step that's too big. You should be able to move easily in and out of the 70-30. We'll do one more round of this. And then there's grasping the sparrow's tail. I'm gonna keep facing you. Lee's gonna face the direction that you would face in the room so that you can follow him but see what my hands are doing. <clears throat> so this one is only with the right foot forward. So get yourself into a good 70-30. Sit into your back leg, make sure that you haven't um, that you have a stance that you can move comfortably in and out of it because that's what we're doing here. We have to keep shifting in and out of the 70-30, so you need to have your feet someplace that you can keep doing that. Right arm is like a ward off. The palm is facing the center of your chest. The arm has a feeling of being rounded. The other hand is between the body and the right hand. Turn, shift, turn to the corner, left arm swings, come back, press, 
Hands come apart as you sit back, elbows drop, palms come forward as you shift back into your 70-30. Reset, turn, sit into the back leg, stay in the back leg, turn, keep turning, arms swings, folds, the hands come together, press. Hands come apart, elbows drop, come forward, and push. Reset. Turn. Sitting into the back leg. Turn. Keep turning. Stay in the back leg. Turn back to the front. Hands come together. Shift. Hands come apart. Sit onto the back leg, elbows drop, forward. Final posture, the arms are still have a bent elbow. Reset. Turn, shift. Turn to the corner, keep turning. Hands together, hands come apart, elbows drop, hands come forward. One more time, ward off right, roll back. Press. and push. Hold it in the final posture for a minute. And rest your legs. So, like I said, we're gonna start putting this stuff together, but make sure that you get a feeling for all of this before um, you try to move on. Because getting this in your body is what the practice is all about. So let's do it one more time now that I've given you a chance to shake your legs out. And we'll stop at each of the final postures. So ward off. Nice open rounded feeling in the right arm. Left hand between the right hand and the body. This is ward off to the right. Turn to the right, sit into your back leg. Your left hand has turned palm up. If you want to detail, the ring finger of your left hand points to the inside of your right elbow. Now, roll back is the name of this move. And roll back goes from the right corner to the left corner. Then we're moving on. We turn more. Arm swings. Hands squeeze together and come into your 70 30 press. So hang out here for a moment and feel stable, centered, balanced in this posture. You don't want to push onto your hands, even though the name is press. Let it be gentle. Let it be just, this arm is here and this one has just come together with it. So that's press. And then the last posture, hands come apart, palms are down, elbows drop as you sit into your back leg. All your weight is back, your hands have come close to the body, the elbows have dropped. And then you come forward and the arms expand just a little bit, enough that they're still a bent elbow. They're not fully extended. So if we do it all as a flow, word off right, roll back. Press. 
and push. And once more, turn, sit onto your back leg, turn, swing the left arm, back to center, hands together, hands come apart, elbows drop, come forward, hands expand. And rest your legs. I want to make a point about the corners. I'm saying go to this corner, go to that corner. Depending on where you're practicing and um, where you are in the room, the, the corner of the room may or may not be the best um, touchstone. So think of yourself as being in your own personal telephone booth. And that's how you know where the corners are. So you don't get caught by the corners of the room, depending on where you are in the room and the shape of the room, that may or may not be available to you. And so that's, um, when we say corner, we mean your corner, not necessarily the corner of the room. I'm gonna hand this over to Lee and we'll do some more. Great. Well, we'll do some more in a second. And I wanna step back just for a moment and talk about how we're teaching this to you. Um, when we learned, we learned one posture at a time. So the first class was to do this much. And we would spend an hour looking at all of the little nitty-gritty details of that move. And then the second class, we learned ward off. You, know, you learned ward off in the second class too. You know. But when we first learned this, the focus was a lot more on static postures and little details. And th that stuff will really, really matter as you get further in your Tai Chi journey. But what we found over the years is that's not a great way for people to learn. And one of the key things that you need to be learning now is what does it feel like to do Tai Chi? If Tai Chi just feels like you're moving your hands and your feet all over the place, um, then you're working from the externals, you're just positioning them. And we want you to really feel what it feels like inside, what are the internals? And we find that that works a lot better if we give people motion. So the thing we're trying to do we do the animal frolics and then we do what we call these form sequences which are little excerpts taken out of the form is that by working on those you can get the feeling and you can see how it flows together so it doesn't start out as a static slideshow one slide next slide next slide next slide but it starts out with flow through it and so when you're practicing don't worry so much about the picky details. We'll give you more picky details than anybody is actually anticipating over the months and years as you work on this. Um, so don't worry about those too much, that'll come. But try to get that feeling of flow. So as you're going into ward off left, it finishes together and you just come back. So just really feel that flow, all the parts moving and don't worry about, you know, is my hand exactly where it's supposed to be? You know, tiny little things. Um, the center of the palm should be directly in front of your center line right here. And so there's a little detail for you. But I don't care if it's, you know, someplace across your palm at this point. I'd much rather see you getting this feeling of going in toward off the ball of air. Everything comes together. Uh, we were just doing grasp sparrow's tail. I'd way rather have you have this feeling of sitting back and turning and then coming back towards the front to press. Get those feelings, look for how it flows together, and we'll get to all the picky details. Practicing Taiji is like 
working your way into an onion. And you just keep, there's just always another layer, there's another layer, there's another layer, there's another layer. Um, it turns out to be an infinite onion, so maybe the onion isn't a very good example. And that's just the one that our teachers used. So you're always peeling another layer off the onion. And then you'll find more underneath it. And as far as I can tell, that has no end. It's an infinite onion, and there's always more layers to peel. So don't feel bad about things that might be in layers that you haven't seen yet. You'll get there. And the way you get there is by working on this. And we find that the best way to get this going initially is getting that feeling of flow and that feeling of moving. And so that's why we work on these form sequences. I'm going to show you another form sequence here. And this will be the last one that we teach you before we start stringing it together. Um, and what that'll do is it'll give you another thing to practice, right? So your morning practice should be do the animals and then work through each of these form sequences that we've taught you. The ward off, the grass sparrow's tail, um, and then the one I'm about to show you, um, which is brush knee, play guitar, uh, brush knee. So we'll do this a bunch. Um, work through those and then when you finish, do the opening move in three sets of three, and then go ahead and do that. And that'll give you a nice uh, chance to review everything that we've looked at, and it'll give you a good feeling when you run through that. And that'll take you someplace between 10 and 15 minutes to do. Okay. Then starting next week, uh, or next class, like Beth said, we'll start linking these things together. Uh, and then you'll have what starts to make up the Tai Chi form. So then you'll know enough that you can get the flow in the Tai Chi form. And so, you know, really work on those. Uh, the sequence I'm about to show you now, we won't hook into the form for a number of weeks. So this one's a little bit confusing, but you'll have a chance to actually build into it. And part of what we're doing is we're trying to uh, take away some of the technically difficult edges that can get, in tr get you in trouble when you're trying to learn and do things that make it pretty easy to do. So we started out with the ward off, we start in the V and we just come forward into ward off. And so you see what's happening here. All I have to do is put my weight in one leg, step with the other and shift and my feet don't have to move. No. Then we did grass sparrow's tail and grass sparrow's tail, you start out with your feet in place. And so you're shifting back and forth, but the feet don't move at all. So you don't even have to take a step here. This next one that I'm going to show you involves stepping and then also will involve turning your foot. And so it's going to be bringing you to a new level of what you have to do with the, how the waist can control the legs, can control the feet. Um, and so you'll have a chance to practice that. And then you'll have a number of, you know, the amount of time that you give yourself. Um, it'll be a number of lessons before we actually get to this next sequence in the form. So you won't have to deal with the stuff that, you know, you're learning by doing that sequence right away. You'll have a chance to build on that. So. Uh, basically recognize that Tai Chi takes time to learn. If you can learn it quickly, what you're learning is just the externals. You're learning a set of dance steps and a choreography, which is really nice if you're, you know, in a group and you want to do some uh, partner dancing and you need to learn a dance. And so you learn it, that takes you a couple minutes and then you get to dance. Um, but what you're doing then in that is the externals. So what you're learning right now in Tai Chi is the external shapes but keep your mind on the internal, what it feels like. And that will keep exposing new depths to you uh, forever, as far as I can tell. So be gentle with yourselves, enjoy it, and just let it build bit by bit by bit as we go through this. So let's do the next one. Um, and uh, we'll have you face this direction. So you're facing left. And the reason is, in the form, we'll do these moves facing that way. So we've had you face the front to do the ward-offs, because that's where ward-off goes. We had you face the right to do grasp sparrow's tail, because that's the direction that grasp sparrow's tail goes. Now we'll have you face the left, because that's the direction that uh, this, these moves, brush knee and play guitar, go. So Beth will face this way. Um, I will face you, so you can see my hands, but you're her. So when you're confused about what to do, um, follow her. And you're going to be, because you're on the other side of the screen, you're going to be having to look over your shoulder, right? If I'm doing this here, um, and Beth's actually that way from me, I've got to look at her. 
So I'm going to have to look at her to see what's happening. And so go ahead and do that. You'll be looking at me to see the hands, but you'll be acting like her. So we start out, start out with your feet in a V. Put your weight in your right foot. Step forward with your left foot for 70-30, so forward and to the side. Most of your weight into the front leg. A good 70-30 square to the wall. Okay, I'm going to face you now. Um, take your right hand and bring it up, palm out. So it's just like push when we were in push earlier. And take your left hand and drop it down here next to your thigh. So this move is called brush knee. As you'll see in a minute, what happens as we go into it is the bottom hand brushes over the knee and the thigh. So it's called brush knee. Put all your weight forward into your front leg and pick your rear foot up and put it back down. Shift as you shift, your arms open. This is big. So just come back to the 70-30. Waist is square to the front. Right hand is high. Left hand is palm down by your thigh. All your weight goes down into your front foot. Pick up your rear foot, replace it. Shift into it and let everything open. This is big. We often say this is stretching the rubber band. So feel like there's a rubber band between your two hands. And as you went into this, you pulled that rubber band apart. Back to the 70-30 brush knee. Down into the front foot, rear foot comes off the ground. Replace it. Shift, stretching the rubber band. And take a break for a second. So when I'm doing this, watch how my rear foot comes up. I'll actually face the way you're not facing so you can see my rear foot. I'm in brush knee and I gather down into my front leg and I just let the rear knee fall so that the rear foot can be picked up. I'm not trying to bring the rear foot in. I'm not trying to kick myself in the butt with my foot. Um, I'm just letting the knee fall so the rear foot comes off the ground and then I put it back on the ground. And when I put it back on the ground, I don't much care where it goes. I'm not going to step behind myself because that's clumsy, but I don't much care where it goes. I let it go back on the ground. I do want it to be aimed towards the corner. So I don't want to turn it out so it's at 90 degrees where I started. And I don't want to have it face the same way as my front foot. And th this will just happen naturally. You let it drop. You put the foot down. And now as you shift, I'm going to turn my waist slightly as I go into the back foot. And that helps me pull the rubber band. So it's like I've got a giant elastic band between my two hands and I'm stretching that apart. So let's do it a little bit more. Brush knee, your face the same way as Beth. Left foot is forward, right hand is high, left hand is by the left thigh. Down into the front foot, let the rear knee drop, foot comes off the ground, foot goes back on the ground. Shift, waist opens to the right and stretch the rubber band back into the 70-30. Down into the front foot, rear foot comes off the ground. Replace it, shift, turning slightly to the right, stretch the rubber band. And this is a fancy rubber band. It goes from my left fingers to my right hand, and then it goes down to my left foot. So I've got a feeling of stretch to the left foot. And if you look, you can see that when I did that, the front foot came up on the, the ball of the foot. So I didn't leave the front foot solid. As I stretched the rubber band, that pulled my front foot, just the heel off the ground, just a little bit. Okay, again, brush knee, left foot forward, right hand high, left hand by thigh. Gather into the front foot, let the rear foot come off the ground, replace it, shift and open to the right, stretch the rubber band, and then release the rubber band. When you release the rubber band, the waist comes back towards the front, the two hands come closer to each other. They're like a wedge. And my left foot moves. It was on the toe over here, and it moves. So it comes in on the heel with the toe slightly lifted. So I'll do that again. Brush knee, left foot forward, right hand high. Gather into the front foot. Rear foot comes off the ground. Replace it. Shift, stretch the rubber band, and then release the rubber band. Everything comes together, hands and foot. Again. Brush knee. Gather into the front foot, rear foot comes off the ground. Replace it, shift, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band, everything comes together. And once more. Brush knee, right hand high, left hand by the thigh. Down, replace the right foot, shift and turn to the right, stretch the rubber band, let go, everything comes back together. This posture here is called play guitar. Uh, play the peepaw, which is a 
Chinese stringed instrument. We learned it as guitar. In it, my right palm is faced towards my left elbow. The two hands are angled in, but they're not crossing. And my, the arm that goes with the empty left leg is extended out. Okay, take a break. So one of the internal feelings that's really important in Tai Chi is one where you create a condition that when you let go, something happens. So when I'm doing this move here and I gather down and I stretch the rubber band, there's the work and I just let go and everything comes together. As opposed to just sort of arbitrarily putting my hand someplace and then thinking the work is here trying to bring things together. Um, that would be using force and effort to do that. So I, in Tai Chi, we are, despite the way your legs might be feeling, we're lazy. And so we would rather not do the work. We would rather get the conditions set up so that when we let go, something happens. So it's, you know, it's like a roller coaster. You do the work to get the roller coaster up to the top of the crest, and then it just slides down. It's not powered down. The work is getting up there. So the work here is in this stretching, stretching what my arms are still loose because the tightness is in the invisible elastic band between my hands. And then I let go and everything just comes together. So this is like a relief. Ah, you just let go and everything comes together. I'm stretched from toe to hand to opposite hand and I let go. So let's do that again a couple more times. Brush knee, left foot forward. Right hand high, left hand by the thigh. Gather into the front foot, let the rear foot come off the ground, replace it. Shift, turning slightly to the right, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band. And again, back to the brush knee. Right hand high, gather into the front foot, replace the right foot. Shift and open to the right, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band. And once more down into the front, replace the rear foot, shift, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band. Great, take a break. So now, one nice benefit of us doing this on video is you can watch it again. You know, when we do this in an in-person class, people have an hour, and as you see, we're covering a lot of material, and then um, you walk away and it's like, Wow, what did I, what did we get? Um, and so what I'd be telling you is, don't worry if you missed a detail, just go to the places. So if you were here and you said, gosh, I'm not sure how I get to this place, but I remember being there, go ahead and just go there. Now you have the benefit of being able to replay, of being able to pause, of being able to watch a lesson again. Um, so go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, this, we will actually, I believe there will be in-person classes again someday. And, uh, you know, we'll be teaching people in person again. Um, and I hope that we'll get to meet the people who are working with these videos and we'll get to, you know, work on Tai Chi with you. Um, but when we do that, we're going to keep these videos up. And I think it will actually be good for students because it won't be quite as much pressure on you in the moment. But the thing is, you do have to learn this. I talked about the student last time who crammed for his final exam by staying up all night, pulling an all-nighter learning Tai Chi. Um, and, you know, the, <laughs> that's the wrong approach. The thing you need to do is start learning how to learn Tai Chi. How do I get my hands and feet to do what I want them to do? How do I me remember this stuff? You've got an aid. You've got an aid of these videos. But make sure you do this on your own, too. Watching the video and mirroring what somebody does is great for learning, but you need to be able to do that on your own. You've got this tool of these videos, so you can say, okay, I'm going to do the, the animal frolics and start out, and then you get to the deer, and you're like, uh, and then you can play the video and say, oh yeah, the deer, the deer is there. Um, or you're working through grass sparrow's tail and you, you know, get to what happens and you can watch the video. So you've got that tool, but make sure you do work on this without the video on your own. So the video doesn't become a crutch. It becomes an assistance because the magic of Tai Chi is that it happens internally. It happens inside. So it's your awareness 
centering itself in places in the body. It's your feeling sensations, actually being aware of what's happening in the body. And the internal energy, the chi, will follow that without you forcing it. And so everything happens internally. And in order for that to happen, you need to not be looking up at a video and double checking because that will take you out of the body. There's no video over where I'm looking. I'm just pretending that's where it is. Um, that'll take you out of your body and you want to be coming into your body. So, you know, watch one of these lessons, see how much you can practice without it. Watch it again, practice without it, practice without it, find the problems, watch it again, you know, work with it that way. Um, and have the videos augment your practice rather than the videos replacing what you're learning. Okay, so there's one more bit to this. Um, let me show it to you a couple times and then we'll do it. And so the bit is, I'm here in brush knee, I gather into the front foot, I step, I turn and stretch the rubber band, I release the rubber band. Now I gotta get back to brush knee. And the way I do that is kind of like rollback. I drop my hands and I turn, I come back towards the front, my front hand drops, my rear hand folds, my front foot steps for a 70-30, I shift, and now at the last minute I turn my waist, the bottom hand is gonna brush across the knee, the top hand is like a push. So doing that again, and we'll loop this a bunch of times in a second now. Stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band. Turn the waist, arm swings, front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps, shift the weight, turn, brush knee. So let's do that. You got Beth, you're facing the same direction as her. You've got me, so you can see what my hands are doing, but stick with her. So, brush knee, left foot forward, right hand high, gather into the front foot, replace the rear foot, shift, stretching the rubber band, release. Everything comes together. Turn the waist, let the arms swing. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps, shift, keep your waist still in the corner, then turn your waist square, brush knee. Gather into the front foot, replace the rear foot, shift, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band. Turn the waist, let the arm swing, front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps, shift, turn your waist at the last minute, brush knee. Again, down into the front foot, shift the weight, stretching the rubber band, release, play guitar. Turn the waist, hands swing, Front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps, shift the weight, last minute, turn the waist. Great, take a break. So, an uh, important thing that I said in there is last minute, turn the waist. Yeah. So when you're doing this, uh, my front hand drops, my rear hand folds, I step. At this point, my waist is still to the corner. When I step, there's a real tendency to come back square to the front. And if I do that, then I'm just gonna have to push my hands rather than having them driven by the body. So from play guitar, my waist is more or less towards the front. I turn, my waist is to the corner. I turn a little further and I come back to the corner as the front hand drops, the rear hand folds and the front foot steps. Now I stay in the corner until I've got my weight in the front leg. And then I turn my waist and that makes everything happen. As appropriate, the rear foot can pivot do that. So I'll face this way so you can see my rear foot pivoting. Down into the front foot, shift, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band, play guitar. Turn the waist, front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps, waist is in the corner. Shift, 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 shift. Now I've got my weight in my front foot and I turn my waist. As I do that, my rear foot may need to come with me. And so I let it come with me, and this is really important. And this is why we haven't said anything about this until this class, because we wanted to get you actually doing some Tai Chi first, um, rather than worrying about the details of your foot. But now it's time to worry about the details of your foot. When you turn your foot, you always turn it on the heel. You never push the heel out, keeping the ball in place. And so what will happen is if I step for my 70-30, from 
I'm in play guitar. I come through here and I step and I put my feet almost in a line. See how my heels are in a line here? When I try to come to the front and turn, I'm not going to have any room and that will make my rear heel push out. I'll do it facing this way so you can see. I'm in play guitar. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps. I'm stepping with my feet in a line. As I come forward and try to turn, I won't be able to do it and my rear heel will push out. So if that happens to you, remember what I said about here and don't do that again. Step with enough width to the side that there's room to turn. So I'm here, I come back, front hand drops, rear hand folds, foot steps. Look, I've stepped over to the side rather than directly in front of me. And then when I come into it, I'm able to turn the rear foot on the heel. So this is not like pitching a softball where you throw it and you let the rear foot go out on the heel. If you've done other uh, martial arts, it's very likely that you might have done a punch that involved letting the rear foot go out on the heel. We never ever do that, never ever. Um, because uh, there's a couple of reasons. One of them is that when I do this, part of my energy is going this way, but another part is going back a different direction because it's pushing the heel out. So that means I'm splitting my energy. And more importantly, you're not staying connected to the ground. So in Tai Chi, we generate the power from the ground that is a wave that comes through our body. That means we have to stay connected to the ground. We don't generate the power on top. Um, generating the power on top is great because you can learn to do it and you can improve quickly. This way takes longer, but lasts longer. So as you get older, you're still able to tap the energy of the ground in a way that if it's all developed on top, you'll be weakening rather than strengthening. So we really want to stay connected to the ground. And so when I'm going into a 70-30 and I have to turn, I stay with the ground on my heel. And so I want to make sure that whenever I turn into a 70-30, the rear foot pivots on the heel. I'll say that again. Whenever you turn into a 70-30, the rear foot pivots on the heel. And so as you practice, you'll find that sometimes you're pushing the heel out. Um, that doesn't make you a bad person. That happens to all of us. The key thing when that happens is to notice that instead of turning in on the heel, you pushed the heel out. So the first step in this is becoming aware of that and then you can start to let it change. So, like I said, this is why we do this sequence after you've had a couple weeks at it because all of a sudden there's this extra complications of stepping and pivoting the foot. So let's do it a little bit more and then we'll close with our three threes of the opening move. So a good brush knee, left foot forward, right hand high, left palm by left thigh. The two feet are angled. You've got width, space side to side, and length, space front to back. Gather into the front foot, let the rear foot come off the ground, replace it, pointed towards the corner. Shift, opening to the right, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band, play guitar. Turn your waist, let the arms swing. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps. Shift, staying in the corner, turn to the front, pivot the rear foot on the heel if you need to. Gather down into the front foot. Shift, stretching the rubber band. Release the rubber band. Turn, arms swing. Front hand drops, rear hand folds. Front foot steps with width. Shift, turn, pivot on the rear heel if you need to. Once more, gather into the front foot. Replace the rear foot. Open and close. Turn the waist, swing the arms. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps, shift, then turn, brush knee. Great. So you learned a lot of moves by now. You've got the opening move, you've got ward off left, you've got ward off right, you've got roll back, you've got press, you've got push. I just showed you brush knee and play guitar. So you've learned eight moves now. I feel good about that. And uh, go ahead and practice and enjoy it. And do ask us questions. Um, you know, don't worry about anything else. If you're working with these videos and you're practicing, then we are happy to answer questions. So you can email us. The uh, email address is on the website, RockyMountainTaiChi at gmail.com. Um, you can text us. The telephone number is on the website. You can text uh, that telephone number. Um, you can, you know, 
write us a heartfelt note and put it in the postal mail. Um, if you do that, give us an email address because we'll write back to you an email. Um, but, you know, feel free to ask us questions. And, you know, they can be what seem like really silly questions. Um, and that's just okay. We are happy to entertain those. If you ask them to us while we're still shooting these videos, then we'll answer them in the videos. Um, if uh, we finish this and you're doing this in a year from now, from my now, um, it's your now, but it's a year in the future. Um, if you're doing it then, um, you know, we obviously won't do the, redo the videos, but we'll respond to you. We may give you a little video clip, maybe we may just give you answers. But we really want more people to be able to practice this awesome art. And so don't feel shy at all. If you're working with these videos and you have a question, feel free to ask us. We will be delighted to answer it. Um, let's run through the brush knee. Uh, play guitar three more times just to do it, and then we'll do our opening move for a closing. So, brush knee. I'm going to face the same way because fun. Um, left foot forward, right hand high. Gather into the front foot, replace the right foot. Shift, body turns to the right, stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band, play guitar. Turn the waist, arms swing. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, front foot steps. Shift then turn. Again, gathering into the front foot. Stretch the rubber band. Release the rubber band. Play guitar. Turn, arms swing. Front hand drops. Rear hand folds. Front foot steps. Shift and turn. Once more from brush knee to play guitar and back to brush knee. So you're doing a lot of Tai Chi now. Keep it up. Come back uh, next class and uh, we'll start stringing the form together. And now we'll do our three threes of the opening move. Again, you're like Beth, so you're gonna face that way. I'll face you. Um, we're gonna shift into the right foot and step to the left. Your left is that direction. So even though my left foot is going that way, you're like Beth with your foot stepping that way. So from the V, Shift into the right leg, step laterally to the left. Shift to the left, that'll open your body slightly to the right. And now turn back to the front, pivoting on the heel of the right foot, just like a 70-30. Shift 50-50 and stand up to a comfortable unlocked knee position. Check your feet. You'd like them to be parallel, they're both pointed forward. You'd like the toes to be in a line, and you'd like them to be a comfortable distance apart. The arms are hanging at your side. First, let the arms swing up. The fingers are drooping, the wrists are soft, and then straighten the wrists. Feel from your feet to your fingertips. Slide the hands back like they're on an invisible tabletop. When they run into you, let the elbows slide back, the wrists drop, the fingers point up, and then gradually straighten the wrists as the hands come down. Again, the arms come up as if lifted by the backs of the wrists, and then feel out to your fingertips. Slide the hands back along the invisible tabletop. Rebalance the arms so the fingers are pointing up. Straighten the, arm, the wrists as the arms come down. Once more, a long curve from feet to fingertips, sliding back on that invisible tabletop. Elbows slide back, wrists drop, fingers point up. Wrists gradually straighten as the hands come down. And now back to the V. Sit into your left leg, turn your waist, which pivots the right foot on the heel. Shift into the right foot, bring the two heels together. Shift 50-50 and stand up. Again, sit in the right, step laterally to the left, shift to the left, turn the waist, pivot on the heel of the right foot, shift 50-50 and stand up. Three times with the arms. Feel from your feet, feel all the space all, all around you. Come back into your center, awareness in the Dantian. Feel the space above you and feel down to the ground as the hands come down. Again. Expanding, filling all the space around you, coming back to your center. Feeling the space above you, feeling down to the ground. Once more, from your feet out to your fingers and beyond, everything comes back into the center. Feel the space above you, feel down to the ground. And close, sit in the left, turn to the right, pivoting on the heel, shift to the right, Bring the heels together, 
stand up. Again, shift to the right, step to the left. Shift to the left, turn the right foot on the heel, 50-50, stand up. Do the arms three times, I won't talk, just enjoy it. And now close, shift to the left, turn to the right, shift to the right, let the heels come together, and stand up. So one of our teachers has said, the most important step in Tai Chi is the next one. When you take this step, are you able to stay relaxed, centered, connected to ground? And so that's what we want to see. We want to see you able to take this into the rest of your lives. So don't worry about what you're doing during class or when you're practicing. Try to stay with it as you do whatever's next. And we'll see you at the next class.